What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and I have an absolute banger of a video for you guys today. Everyone knows that the Magicka Sorcerer is in the roughest spot he has ever been in the entire history of the Elder Scrolls Online. Which has left a lot of players kind of abandoning the class while well, I've decided to revitalize the class and come up with the best build feasibly possible for the Magic Sorcerer. And I think we've done it guys. This is the most fun I've had on the Magic Sorcerer in literally years. And the best part about the build is that all the sets are easily attainable and it's very, very forgiving. Your damage rivals that of other Magic Sorcerer PvP builds and your survivability is absolutely through the roof. So kick back and relax guys because this is going to be a full in-depth video on the Magicka Sorcerer. I feel that a lot of things needs to be explained and there's a lot of techniques that a lot of people aren't aware about and I want to do a deep dive of. So without further ado guys, let's hop into the video. Before we hop into the build video guys, consider giving the channel a like and sub if you're enjoying the content. And if you want to be notified when I produce new content or when I go live on YouTube and Twitch, please also hit the bell notification icon so YouTube will give you a heads up. Alright guys, so hopping into the character sheet, we are a Dark Elf on this build. That may not be the ideal race. You could alternatively, you could go Khajiit or you could even go Britain. That's entirely up to you. Now we do have all of our attribute points into maximum magic because once we have a hardened ward up, our health does go up to 30k, so I wouldn't recommend any more than that. Moving on down into the character sheet, we are running the Lover Mundus. The reason we're running the Lover on this build, even though we're running Ward, is because we're running 4 Heavy on this build, and I will explain to you why here in just a moment. Also running the Bee Witch Sugar Skulls as our food of choice. Now this is our resistance, this is fully buffed up on our back bar, so we're sitting around 35k spell resistance, and we're also sitting around 33k physical resistance with a decent amount of crit resist as well. Now going over to the front bar with all of our recoveries, we're seeing at around 1550 magic and stamina recovery. Now with continuous attack, this will go up to damn near 2000 with all of our sets fully active. If you think you need a little bit more magic recovery on this build, you can definitely go the Astro Munda Stone or when we go over our jewelries, you can change some of the spell damage over into magic recovery. So pay close attention to our health recovery. It is actually at 3000. So what they equate to is like 1500 heals per second. Now I'm not running vampirism on this build because quite frankly, we're super tanky enough. And then the downsides to running vampirism, all your spells costing an astronomical amount higher. It's just very, very hard to sustain. I feel like I have to sacrifice too much damage in order to sustain with a vampirism so having a high health recovery is really good for those prolonged fights and i think having vampirism is really good to mitigate bursts when you're really low down into execute range all right so hopping into our sets guys the very first set on the build is going to be a three-piece willpower on our front bar we have a weapon damage enchantment as well as a sharpened traits willpower is going to give you max magic and it's also going to give you a lot of spell damage now, depending on your spammable, you could potentially run charged. If you're running Crushing Shock, that might actually be the better alternative because you can run charge, which is going to give you minor Brittle, Concuss, and the Brain Stats effect. Literally on whoever you're focusing, like 100% uptime. And then you'll also want to swap the Weapon Damage Enchantment to Poison just so you can have 100% uptime on your Poison Stats effect as well. While that does offer a little bit less burst, it is a lot of sustained pressure. So when it comes to our back bar set, we're running a Restoration Staff of Wretched Vitality. Now, when it comes to the weapon type, I actually think a bow would be best in slot on this class. At the point of making this video, I do not have my bow skill line completely maxed out, nor do I even have it unlocked because who would think to run a bow on a mag sword? But your back bar weapon type is completely, you know, I won't say irrelevant, but it's entirely up to you. Nothing is going to make or break the build. If you want more crit, toss on some daggers. If you want some more weapon spell damage for whatever reason, toss on some Nernhone dual wield. If you want to have a little bit more healing, restoration staff. If you want to have more mobility, toss on a bow. And the best thing about the set is that it's craftable, so you can have whatever armor weights you want and also whatever traits that you want on it. Now we are actually running the Escapist Poisons. This is probably necessary if you want to play Sorcerer. These are so, so good. They're very trolly and they're very, very strong. So what they actually do, they immobilize your target and it grants you Unstoppable for 4.4 seconds, meaning you cannot be CC during that time. The really funny part about this is the immobilization effect applies to people's mounts. So you can just heavy attack rest of them and it roots their mount in place. That way you can knock them off and force you to fight because you always run into those people who just want to run by you and it seems like they have like 10,000 stamina on their horse and no matter what you do you can't knock them off well this allows you to knock them off 
Now our mythic of choice on this build is actually going to be Gaze of Sithis. Now I'm a huge fan of Sea Serpent Squirrel, but the fact of the matter is guys, I found myself not proccing Sea Serpent Squirrel nearly as much as I wanted to. It felt like it had like a 70 to 80% downtime. It's very, very difficult to get your health back up to full unless you're running like two wards. So I felt like the downtime on Sea Serpent Squirrel for me when I'm one VXing is just too much. So I went with the set that is going to give me benefits literally all the time. So Gaze of Sithis is going to give you 3200 maximum health. It's going to give you a thousand health recovery, which it could have been a lot better before they nerfed health recovery, but it is what it is. It's going to give you 4000 armor, but the downside is that it reduces your block mitigation to zero. So having the mitigation reduced to zero really isn't that big a deal because on the magic of Sorcerer, you're either word stacking or you're going to be roll dodging and streaking quite a bit. So that block mitigation to zero, it really doesn't matter. The only time this does bite you in the butt is when people people spam meteor on you because there is nothing you can do to mitigate that damage. So our enchantment is maximum magica and then all of your heavy pieces should be ideally reinforced just to maximize your physical and spell resistance. Now going into our chest which is also our third set this is Mars Bomb. Now Mars Bomb is very infamous set is going to give you incredible healing over time. We're actually double barring this just to maximize the effects of this. It gives you armor, gives you critical resistance, gives you healing taken and then when a negative effect is removed from you you restore around 1700 health. Now this will go up a little bit with our buffs and Cyrodiil but the whole point of this set is to give you a really nice decent healing over time now when a negative effect is quote unquote removed that could be reapplying an effect it could be an effect falling off it can be a dot falling off literally if someone is like spamming Ellie drain on you you're going to get healed every single time they spam Ellie drain because they're removing the effects and reapplying it but the most beneficial part to the set is that when you have more than five or excuse me six negative effects on you you purge everything and then you get like this huge burst seal for all the effects purge and this is on a 15 second cooldown this is why this set is very very strong not only does it offer a really good healing over time but it also offers you a burst when you need it most. We're running max magic on this as well, heavy reinforced, shoulders that have wretched vitality light, all the other pieces that are not heavy are going to be well fitted. I have maximum magic on every other single piece because you don't need the health or you, and you don't need the stamina if you're running Dark Elf. Now if you're running something like a Breton or a Khajiit, I would suggest running tri stats on your big pieces, but because I have Dark Elf and it gives me enough stamina to play around with, I'm just rocking maximum magic on everything. So we have wretched vitality light waist on the body, we also have wretched vitality Vitality medium because we need to maximize our Undaunted and that is the beauty of running Wretched Vitality is because you can get your full Undaunted passes this way. Legs is Mars Bomb's Greaves heavy reinforced again and also the legs Mars Bomb heavy reinforced. When it comes to our jewelry we have a Mars Bomb Amulet Spell Damage Arcane, we have a Mars Bomb Ring Spell Damage Arcane and then we have our Ring of Willpower Spell Damage Arcane. All right, guys, so hopping into the skills, and of course, the bread and butter of the build is going to be Crystal Fragments. Next, we're going to be running Hardened Ward on our front bar. Now, let me talk a little bit about Hardened Ward. So there is this stereotype or whatever you want to call it that you have to have a huge maximum magic pool for your Hardened Ward to be effective. That is simply not the case. While it is a contributing factor to the overall ward strength, your resistance is play a factor in this as well. So even though we only have around a 40k or a 38k maximum magical pool, this ward guys in Cyrodiil is 10k on tooltip. Now you may say to yourself, well 10k is you know, not that good, but when you have 35k resistances and this is a 10k consistent damage shield, it is really, really beefy. Compare that to something that might be a 12k hardened ward, for example, and then usually people are running around 12k hardened ward on tooltip. Their resistances are sitting around like 20k. So what they those kind of cancel out when you think about it. And also having such a high resistance pool allows you to not have to spam this every freaking six seconds is the most annoying part about playing Magsork because typically when you get caught with your wards down, you just get completely flattened. Not on this build, guys. I actually find myself rarely using Harden Ward unless I get completely jumped by a Zerg of people. This is more or less kind of like a coagulate from Dragonite. You only use it when you need it. You don't necessarily have to have this up at all the time, which allows for a, a brawleristic playstyle, a lot of neutral play, and you don't have to waste all of your resources casting a 4,000 magic cost ward. So all of that 
resources you are saving from not having to spam hard word constantly, you can funnel that into damage instead. So just some food for thought. Now, Inner Light is our next ability. This is going to give us our major savagery and prophecy on the front bar, increasing our spell critical ratings by about 10%. And it's also going to increase our maximum magic by 5%, which is going to bolster our hard ward even further. Now, I'm going to spend a couple minutes talking about our spammable. Now, I am running Crushing Weapon on this. I do believe Crushing Weapon is best in slot if you are going to run this build because this is your spammable it also gives you access to major breach and when this attack misses you restore like half of the stamina used to fire off the spell but because i am on controller okay it is very very difficult to streak and land a light attack consistently and what will happen is that if you are not absolutely on point with your light attacks the entire time on controller if you miss one single light attack you are missing a huge amount of burst during your combo so if you are on controller or if you're on console i personally prefer running crushing shock here but for the sakes of this video and to min max this build as much as possible crushing weapon is the best spammable here if you are able to master it now if you are missing your light attacks constantly like i am crushing shock is going to be a better alternative last skill on our bar is going to be streak now this is our range cc also our gap close and also our get the hell out button now let me explain some advanced mechanics of streak really quick i think you guys did not know about so i made an entire guide on advanced movement mechanics in the elder scrolls online i'll leave up on the screen somewhere you can do what is called plane jumping with street so because the programming or whatever is so dog water in the elder scrolls online you can actually add a jump a directional jump at the tail end of your streak giving you not only horizontal but also verticality as well this allows you to jump over obstacles and allows you to traverse keeps in serial a lot easier and you get to position where most people can't even get I want to show you an example of this so we can all agree from this position on this little itty bitty corner we'll just pick this little itty bitty corner if I streak I'm going to fall off right fall to my death yeah we are Audi 5000 we are dead so here we are at about the exact same position now you can actually do what's called plane jumping where you can add a directional jump to the tail end of your streak and here's how we do it essentially you're going to flick your camera around as quickly as you can now if you're in console i don't think you can do this as effectively you can't do a 180 snap while i'm about to show you but if you're a mouse and keyboard you most definitely can and you can do it very very consistently You see that I completely streaked off of the platform. I'm able to 180 jump back on to where I'm standing now. Why am I able to do that? Because at the tail end of the streak, there is one frame at which the game registers that you are still on this platform from. So from your origin of streak, the game still thinks you're on this platform. So this allows you to get a jump off in whatever direction you are facing. So while that technique does seem very niche, like it can't have any applicable means, it actually does come in handy from time to time when you're jumping from rock to rock or from a platform to a platform across a river, it actually does come in clutch a lot of the time. Now our ultimate choice on the front bar is going to be Dawnbreaker Smiting. This is going to add a huge amount of AOE burst as well as a stun. Now there is a trick once we go over to the back bar, there is a trick between Dawnbreaker and Power Overload on our back bar. I'm gonna go ahead and explain this. So what you want to do, the perfect combo for the Sorcerer, I'm very surprised more people are not doing this, okay? If you run Overload on your back bar, okay, and you're doing your, your normal spell rotations and you're softening your opponent up, you know, kind of doing whatever that you got to do, you can also activate Dawnbreaker while you're doing this full combo, right? So you see your opponent slow, just act Dawnbreaker as, as an execute and... Yeah, so it's actually really, really incredible. That I don't see a lot of people doing this. And there's a couple niche interactions I want to show you guys after I get out of combat here with uh, this target Ogrim. That's uh, I I honestly like it didn't dawn on me until like last patch you could do this combo. Um, now they did change it to where as soon as you activate your ultimate, you do untoggle overload, so you can't stack it. You know, kind of indefinitely, kind of like a, a meteor. You know, with uh, with overload or whatever. So if you have overload on the front bar, and here's also a, a nice mechanic: if you animation cancel Dawnbreaker, it actually untoggles your overload. So it's good. toggle overload, light attack. You can see 
shooting light balls into the air. If you animation cancel Donnie, it'll untoggle it for you. So instead of wasting a global cooldown to go back to your back bar, untoggle overload, then go back to your back bar, a whole nother global cooldown. So this is going to save you two seconds just by animation canceling Dawnbreaker. That will get you out of your overload so you can continue with your burst and save your overload charge. Now, one more thing to note with overload, you cannot gain ultimate while you are in your overload form, okay? It doesn't matter if you're in combat. It doesn't even matter if you have minor heroism active, which I just popped a potion here. See, I have minor heroism active. Take a look at my ult bar. It does not go up. So please do not be in overload any longer than you have to. Just get out of it as soon as you can. Now going over the rest of the skills on our back while we're running Dark Deal, if you're running Crushing Weapon as your spammable, you'll want to run Dark Deal because you're going to run out of stamina. You just have to siphon up from your Magicka and you're good to go. Now on the flip side, if you are running Crushing Shock, you will want to swap this to Dark Conversion because you're going to have way more stamina than you know what to do with. So you need to siphon it over from your stamina or the Magicka, kind of like a, a little yin yang for the sword, you know? Run Curse on the back bar and Harden War on the front bar. The reason you want to have it like this is because our max of magic is higher on the front bar and then Curse on the back bar. This allows us to keep up one of our passes that is going to give us an additional amount of stamina recovery. Our next skill is Resolving Vigor. This is by far the best best healing over time ability in the game this is probably actually the best ability in the entire game It's very cheap to cast it gives you a massive 20k heal over five seconds and it also gives you minor resolve increasing your physical and spell resistance by 3000 absolute must have next is critical surge this is our source of major brutality and major sorcery and this is also going to heal you whenever you get chris this is a very underrated buff do not try to slot alliance spell drop pause because you just want to save an additional slot on your back bar this is actually just a good buff to have because every single crit that you get doesn't matter how small it is it's going to heal you for around 16 to 1700 in serial every single time now it used to be there was no internal cooldown on this and literally every single crit you got like mars bomb used to be used to heal you now they added one second internal cooldown which uh definitely balances it. it needed it which is going to lead us into hurricane now hurricane compared to lightning form or boundless storm or whatever it's called um this actually has a huge aoe radius on this and it does a decent amount of damage over time now the reason this is so good is because if you have two or three people jumping on you when you have this massive aoe around you it is going to crit constantly so this is like having like damn near a rapid region on you at all times when this crits when you have two or three people here it is going to be critting very very often further feeding into your sustain from critical surge and then again we'll go over power load on our back bar now you could also if you're running into further sustain issues you could potentially slot the other more for this ability which is called energy overload now energy overload is kind of like the battle roar passive from the dragonite every single time you land a line attack you restore 1000 magicka and also 1000 stamina so potentially if you wanted to if you had the money you could run heroism pots on this build and I have minor heroism at all times and then energy load on your back bar and you can sustain very very freely just by running energy overload instead of power overload that's entirely up to you how you want to play it hell you could even put mars bomb on the back bar right run minor heroism potions put wretched vitality on the front bar okay and then you can run blood spawn having even more ultimate regeneration and in theory you could kind of just run this like a dragonite to where you have no recoveries and you just crutch off your energy overload for your sustain eh, just some more food for thought guys now i'm gonna go over my basic combo of how you want to run this build like i stated before you want to use dumb breaker it's kind of like a pseudo x cute so typically you're going to have all your buffs up you're going to have curse on your target yada yada you want to try to time your burst if you have time around the second vicious curse because this allows you to go into your overload kind of weaken your opponent down and when you think they're about to pop you're going to dawn breaker into a frag and then they're dead so again use overload is kind of like a softening tool to get them down into a range to where they can be executed by a frag dawn breaker combo now, I actually do have an example of this here on screen. This is a duel out in the open world, a very, very sweaty duel against two of the worst classes in the game, as you can see. We're overload spam him and use, he gets really low, and then we're gonna use Dawnbreaker as an execute. GG.
Now potions you want to run on this build is obviously a tri stat potions. You also want to have essence of detection because nine blades are super, super annoying as always. And then if you had the money for it, guys, run heroism potions. If you plan on running energy overload, that is going to absolutely carry your sustain. Now, if you really want to sustain guys, you could run these essence of vitality potions. This is going to give you major vitality for 16 seconds and it's also going to grant you minor heroism for the entire duration. Hopping over into our champion point system, we're gonna go over the blue tree first because that's definitely my favorite. So you're gonna be running Master at Arms, you're gonna be running Weapons Expert. Now what Weapons Expert does, it does increase the damage of your overload light attacks by 20%. While this does not show up on your tooltip, it does show up in your damage. Give it a try if you don't believe me. Second, we'll be running Deadly Aim. And then last but not least, we'll be running Ironclad. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, if you need max magic, why aren't you running Arcane Supremacy? Well, Arcane Supremacy really only gives you 1300 max magic. And just the sheer mitigation value of Ironclad is just going to be better than that little bump to your max magic. Now, if you are running Crushing Shock, I, I will actually suggest for you to remove Ironclad. Yes, this is 6% damage and mitigation, but you can make this up in other ways, right? You could potentially run Vampirism. It's entirely up to you when you run force of nature this is going to give you 660 penetration for each stats effect you have on your target so you're going to have a minimum of five stats effects up on your target at any given time multiply this by five you know this is like 3000 something like that that equates to about six seven percent extra damage so it's entirely up to you what you want to run but if you're running crushing weapon as your spammable this is the setup i would go with hopping over into our red tree we're running bastion this is going to increase the effectiveness of rewards and it's also going to increase the damage that we do to other people's wards as well so if you run into another mag sword the running ward you're not going to be at a disadvantage running survival instincts pain's refuge and sustain by suffering so in the green tree it's mostly quality of life perks so if you are in the green tree please slot liquid efficiency if you are running heroism potions because they're very very expensive and having a 10 percent chance to get them back is really nice from war mounts gift of rider and last but not least steve's blessing and before i peace out guys if you do want to increase your max magic a little bit further of course you can always slot arcane supremacy and if you don't want to run the lover mundus you can run the mage if you run the mage Age, you are going to be losing about four percent of your overall damage when compared to the lover but it will give you a little bit beef reward if you want to go that route it's entirely up to you all right guys i've talked about everything i want to talk about in today's video if you want to see this build live in action please hit the bell notification icon so youtube notifies you when i go live otherwise youtube again is not going to tell you jack squat please consider liking and subbing to the channel if you've enjoyed today's content and don't forget guys i do offer a pvp coaching if you want to take pvp seriously and you want to get to the next level and you, if you just feel like you're struggling a little bit you just need a little bit of guidance to kind of help point you in the right direction i got you guys the links to all that is down in the description below do not forget to follow me on twitch and twitter i would really appreciate the follow on twitch because eventually i do want to be a part of the iso stream team and i need a thousand followers to get there so please help your boy out so with all that being said guys i'll let you get back to the rest of your day i hope you have a good one i'll catch you in the next one peace